Good day to you, monsieur. Shush, 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 silence. I like your fishing rod, not a euphemism. I like your fishing rod. It's a beauty. Yes, nice, isn't it? It's an enhanced fiberglass telescope, ultralight 47, the latest model. Could you give me one of your fish? <laughs> On this is an adventure day, game. I would, but I just haven't been able to catch enough today. How many fish have you caught? Well, not a single one, my friend. That's not a lot. Yeah, precisely. I must try to catch some now, otherwise I will have nothing to offer this evening. You're planning to sell the fish? No, no. I have visitors coming this evening, you understand? I see. I suppose there's nothing doing then. Sorry. Why don't you just buy a fishing rod of your own and come and join me? Who knows? If you're nice and quiet, you may be lucky. Forget this murder-solving nonsense. Let's just be a fisherman for the rest of this game. Do you mind if I hold your fishing rod for a while? Sorry, my friend. It was very expensive. I spent 800 Dear francs on it, expensive. and I'm not going to let anyone else touch it. What are you planning to catch? Uh, you may not believe me, but I've caught all kinds of things here. You know, I've caught pike five meters long with eyes like plates and razor sharp teeth. I don't believe That's you. why I bought this river rod. monsters. The last one was pulled clean out of my hands by one of those beasts. Do you expect me to believe that? Of course. It's the Might truth. be Jeremy Wade for I all I know. It. I even had some photos of one of those fish, but I'm afraid I lost them. They fell into the water. Right here. And now there's not a shred of evidence to support your story. That is a pity. Don't you believe me? Ask Capitaine Deneuve. He will confirm it. I often show you I don't the care. That I catch. Not that invested. I want to turn down the music, but I don't know why it's so much louder all of a sudden. My wallet's probably in there too with that fish. Capitaine Deneuve? Who's that? Oh, you don't know him? He captains the ferry that brought you here. He's over there, on board. He's experienced a lot and has been all over the place. He knows a lot of stories. Incredible stories. Oh? Like what, for example? You'll have to ask him that yourself. I never really listen properly when he starts spinning his yarns. He's bound to tell you a story or two. You just have to know how to deal with him. Yeah, this guy went to the same sitting position school as Janet back at HQ. That is awkward as sin. <laughs> Alright. This might be the response we need. An hour later. I should have asked, and what an ass am I for not thinking of this, how to deal with him? What do you mean? How to deal with him? What do you mean? Not so loud, please. Because of the fish? No, because of Capitaine Deneuve. He might hear us. And? Look, I'll tell you something. Deneuve's a bit strange. He insists on being addressed by his title. It's a, how do you call it, a peculiarity of his. Oh? Why is that? He's an old sea dog from a real old seafaring family. Some ancestor of his served in Napoleon's fleet. He himself used to go out to sea doing the real thing. Got a master's certificate and all that. Seen the world, so he says. These days he just captains the ferry. But he still insists on like FA. using his title. He says his rank should still command people's respect. Oh, well, if that's all, I don't mind. What do I have to call him, then? Monsieur le Capitaine Charles de Neuve. That's his full title. He'll appreciate that. Got it. Thanks for the hint. And if anyone's watching this and they're like, How do I do this? I don't understand. If you've already, like, soft-locked it and you can't get this conversation because you've already been through this with this guy, you need to go back to Scotland Yard or at least back anywhere on the other side of Portsmouth. Come back. It should reset all the dialogue options as far as I know. And then you can ask him fresh. In that order, let's talk to... I wasn't even paying attention. What's your name? Excuse me? What's your, what? what's your full title? Monsieur le Capitaine Charles de Neuve. You're Monsieur le Capitaine Charles de Neuve, aren't you? Yes, that is correct, my boy. Charles de Neuve, Capitaine of the Merchant Navy of France. How do you know my name? I've been talking to a friend of yours, the fisherman over there at the jetty. Pierre? Ah, yes, old Pierre. Yes, I expect he has been telling now. you about his pike, the one that was five meters long. Yes, he did. Is that real? Now I'm like, I'm so paranoid that I'm going to pick the wrong option and then lock myself out of being able to pick the right option. <laughs> I need to go back and talk to Miller and have him chew me out before I come back. 
I don't care about his story. Pierre says you're from Carmont, like he is. Is that true? Yes, that's right. I grew up here. As a youngster, I wanted to be a fisherman and used to work on my father's trawler. Later, I went to naval college to become a captain of the Merchant Navy of France. I have a small house at the end of the road, just behind France. Are you inviting me over? You used to work for the Merchant Navy? Yes. I have been to practically every single port all over the world, from New York to Zanzibar, from Rotterdam to Cape Town. I have sailed all known and unknown oceans, rivers, backwaters, lakes, and canals. I have seen things no other man on earth has ever seen. Sounds exciting. Yes. But all that was a long time ago. In a few years' time, I shall retire and begin working on my memoirs. Sound like an older white man doing those lines for some reason to me. That's cool. Uh, your memoirs. Your memoirs? That sounds interesting. Oh, yes, my boy. I've seen a lot, you know. Disasters, storm tides, elements, mysteries. Really? Won't you tell me more? I have seen ships disappear in the Bermuda Triangle. I saw the Prince of Egypt sink. I witnessed the accident of the Pride of Paris in Cape Town Harbor. Witnessed. You were in all those Makes places. Makes it sound like he caused it. Of course. It. And that's not all. I have seen tsunamis 40 meters high and octopuses with 16 tentacles. I thought octopuses only had eight tentacles. Yeah, by definition. Quite, my boy. Quite. I have seen things a common landlubber. <clears throat> no offense, my boy. Cannot even begin to imagine octopuses with twice the normal number of tentacles. <laughs> what do you say to that? Well, that's. I'd say you sound like you're from Jamaica. <laughs> what about the castle? Yes. What do you know about the castle of Carmor? The castle. The castle is shrouded in greater mystery than the darkest secrets <laughs> I have ever experienced. That was just two octopuses Earth. going that's at saying it. saying something. Precisely, my boy. After all, I have seen and heard more than most mortals could ever dream of. But none of it is as mysterious as the story of the castle of Carmor and its evil owner. Tell me more. Tell me more about the castle. The Fisherman castle of Carmor hmm, was once the home of a good and righteous lord. Around 1000 AD, the Druids came there. Now You've we're heard talking. of the Druids, I take it? Oh yes, quite a lot in fact. Go on. Where did these druids come from? They were the last of the druids from Britain. Really? Yes, really, my boy. Do you know why they came to the castle? They entrusted the lord and his family with the safekeeping of something of great value to them. A blackbird. Nobody ever found out, my boy. All right, what happened then? The item remained in the family's possession for generations. But then the castle went to a descendant of the family who was not good and righteous, but cruel and mean. The evil lord of Carmor. Cruel was and mean. Was called? Double whammy. That's what he has been called for centuries. He was a tyrant and a murderer. He enjoyed killing and held satanic ceremonies at the castle. Huh. Villagers would disappear from Carmor and never be seen again. They say he was executed during the Inquisition. What do you mean, they say? Was he or wasn't he? No. I know the true story. The castle was destroyed before the Inquisition ever began. But how? The truth was told in a very old Breton legend. And? One day, a salt seller by the Here name of Gergen came to the castle of Carmor and asked the evil lord for a drink of water. But the lord set his dogs on the man. Go on. Out of revenge for the lord's cruelty, Gergen hurled a handful of salt at the castle, which tumbled down immediately burying the Lord beneath it. But why? It was an ancient druid curse. Salt. How can salt destroy a whole castle? Through the magic of the druids. Salt is a destructive element. It corrodes, it decomposes, Over time. it arches, it can make people die of thirst. The salt seller had knowledge of druid customs. Well, he certainly knew how to use the magic that druids employed to deal with their enemies. Hmm. So the evil lord died. Yes. 
He's buried in the mausoleum in the castle cemetery. Some sort. How do you know all this? I am that lord. How do you know all this? From age-old stories that people tell around here. Children heard them from their parents, who in turn had been told them by their own parents. They were handed down through the generations. Sometimes probably change over the years, like even when come you play telephone. Town. People like you asking about the old stories. Writers, researchers, all sorts. We even had a real aristocrat here from England once. <laughs> he was very interested in the castle. What did the man want? He said he'd lost something out at the ruin. There it is. Uh, a necklace, uh, a family heirloom. That's what we're looking for. It seems to have been very important to him. The five of them spent days searching the ruins. Five? Yes, there were five of them. They rented rooms above the bistro. Five big wigs well. in smart suits. One even had a uniform on. Did they find the next suit? Uniform. No, I don't think so. They left after a couple of days. Hmm. Thought it was five days. Hmm. I don't know if I trust you, Monsieur Le Capitan. But that amulet's right next to my wallet. Do you know his name? No, I've forgotten. It was quite a while ago. Fair enough. Thank you, Monsieur Le Capitaine. You've been a great help. You're welcome, Eventually. After a lot of stuff, I edited it out. So everyone watching this is like, Why are you so uptight, man? That seems fine. Because you don't know what we cut. Anyway. Cool. Alright, where is this cat? There's a cat. And some salt. And we gotta scoop the Excuse cat up. Excuse me, Pierre. Yes? Now what? With the scarf. I'd like to ask you something about Capitaine de Neuve. Have you spoken to him? Yes, I have. And you were right. He's a very strange very man. Very strange man. Can you really believe everything he says? Well, I'm not sure, quite honestly. He's a sailor, and they're always full of stories. Fifty years at sea are a long time. Enough time to experience a great deal. And for a lot of things to become a bit muddled up in one's mind. He certainly seems to say some strange things. I don't think all his stories are true, but there's a core of truth in many of them. You'll have to make up your own mind which of his stories to believe. Hmm. Is he a friend of yours? You guys, you know. Why does he only captain a small ferry nowadays? So yeah, I'll trust him he with. He used to command a large merchant ship. I was going to say. Then he was dismissed. I... I think it was because he drank. He's a drinker. He missed Cape Town Harbor in the fog. That could have happened to anyone. Drink or no drink. Yes, but it so happens that with him, it was drink. <laughs> he was actually seeing double. In the fog, he saw the shadowy outlines of two bays and ordered his helmsman to set course for the one on the right. And that was the wrong one? Exactly. There was no right-hand bay. The port had one bay, I not know. two. 50-50 chance. You'd better keep that to yourself. He gets pretty embarrassed if anyone mentions Going to him right now. I understand. Now. I mean, that's... That's understand. Like, if there were three, then he could be held live. You know, like, you know, dude on in the middle. But left and right? Again, 50-50 chance. Is he a friend of yours? Friend? Well, I've seen him almost every day for a number of years. He captains the ferry. I do my fishing. When he's finished for the day, we sometimes go over to the bistro for a glass of pastis. Yes, now I come to think of it, I suppose we are friends. You had to think about it for you a second. you get on well with each other? Yeah, I guess I we are. I should think it's pretty difficult being friends with a man like him. Oh, we get on rather well, really. We don't talk much, you know. If anything, he does the talking. Spins his yarns. The only thing about him that sometimes drives me crazy... There it is. ...is his damned cat. The captain has a cat? Yes. He lets her out here on the jetty in the morning and takes her back in at night. And the damned beast spends all day slinking around here. You don't like cats. I hate cats. They steal the fish from my bucket or get tangled up in my fishing oh, line. They're about to. The nerves creature has often knocked my bucket of bait over, and I've had to go and get some more. I've told him hundreds of times to take the animal on the ferry with him, but he just won't do it. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, man, I don't want to click the wrong thing. Okay. Thank you for your assistance. No problem. You're welcome. All right. Yeah. Never not use a fresh save file from here on out. I've learned my lesson. 
All right, so we'll hide behind this barrel. I'm all over this by now, by the way, everyone. Is Fred? Yes, you get. If any, you only the cap. Yes, you don't. I have I've top. Okay, no problem. There's the friggin' cat. Good lord. No rhyme or reason. Is it because we took the ferry a couple times? Is it because anything we did, I'll never know. But there's the cat. We try to make walkthroughs out of these sometimes, you know, but... Wow. We did see a cat, right? It's not just my imagination. And I'm supposed to scoop it up with the, uh... No, better not. Did see a cat, right? You're supposed to hide back here and the cat's supposed to show up again. There's the cat. Hello, meow meow. That's not a pl you can't just teleport, meow meow. He can't. <laughs> he still exists behind that box. I knew you were going to show up over here or something like that. There we go. There we go. Holy smokes. Most ridiculous puzzle we've encountered in a very long time. Let's save while we have this cat in our possession. Good lord. Alright, so now we got to use this cat to mess with... Uh, Pierre's. There you go. Pierre's world, essentially. So yeah. Did you see that? Did you see that? It's that damn cat again. She's knocked all my bait in the water. That's the third time this. I'm ready to murder you. I don't down. care. You can always get some new bait. I don't what care. What about my fishing tackle? What about my telescope ultralight 47 for 800 francs? I can't leave it here unguarded. It could be stolen. I'll have to take everything with me. Just because of that damned cat. Don't worry, Pierre. I'll keep an eye on your thing. Yeah, we're friends by now. Of course. No problem. Thank you, my friend. Then I'll go right now. I love it. We're such a dick. At least we didn't drug this guy. We just created a diversion. Taking your bucket, taking your rod. Not a euphemism, I need them both. All right. I think we're supposed to use this on the the boat somehow. There we go. Get some of that sweet, sweet salt. Sweet, sweet salt. The green scarf. It's Janet's. There it is. Moon logic. <laughs> Capitan's like, what are you doing? That is my salt. My boat salt. I will kill you. How about that? Alright. We now have salt. We can go interface with the tombstones at the castle. Man, that was rough. Not gonna lie. Anyway. Schloss this must be the castle. Out. Or rather what's left of it. Pretty creepy. 800 franc rod. Yeah, I think once we uh, finish this case, maybe we'll go fishing. I think we've earned a break after this little mini vacation. Maybe we'll take Melanie. Who knows? Maybe Janet. Maybe she'll come around once we crack the case. Certainly won't be with Lowry at that point, I'll tell you that. Alright, I don't know how I'm editing this, but uh, I discovered that we use, unaccountably, our folder on this gate. And as we all know, folder plus gate equals open. 
All right, now we're supposed to use the salt on one of these tombstones. Who the hell is that? Kind of looked like, what's her name from Blade Runner? She was going this way. Who is that? Was it just me, right? Although this game has a history of, a well-documented history of showing bodies where they don't necessarily belong. Hmm. All right. Salt on the tombstone, obviously. A gravestone. Pretty weather beaten. Is that it? What else do we. Bone? We're grinding it up. Okay. Cool. What was the deal with that person? Was it just me, right? We saw somebody walking around the uh, graveyard. Huh. All right, so we got to find that little castle again. And I guess we can take it down as per the Capitan's whatever he said with uh, some some of the sweet, sweet salt. All right, I've come full circle apparently. Oh, there it is. I, I saw it in the background there. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, we were here before. I'm sure this has all been edited out by now, but yeah, we were here before wandering about and... Oh, no. Hold on. Down here? I guess. There it is. All right. Throw some salt and use the druid incantation. You know that, right? You're a British man. Yeah. Just a white British man. Seems to have worked. You should know how to do that. Sweet looking chest. Let's check it out. So happy I'm getting results just like uh, Miller wanted. Chief Miller. There she is. I was wondering if when uh, Arthur Blake showed us the picture in the book of the medallion, if we'd need to like be able to pick it out from a medallion lineup. No, it's just here in a chest that we knocked down with salt that we got by putting some salt crystals on a gravestone and kind of uh, grinding them down with a bone that we got from a murder scene earlier. And we got that salt from scraping off the side of a boat using a fishing pole that we stole from a local fisherman named Pierre that we... Uh, got to lower his guard and walk away, creating a diversion. Using a cat, which we could only access by way of some very tricky soft lock dialogue options with the, uh... I digress. We have the medallion, gang. This must be the amulet. I found it. I'm excited. Very excited. Let's, uh, let's carry on. We just show this to Chief Miller and be like, am I cool? Can I go fishing now with my 800 franc top of the line, whatever Pierre called this thing? He's never seen it again, I'll tell you that right now. It's probably all we need here. Is 
So is all this other, all these other screens just fake me out? Still not back. That's fine. It'd be awkward for him to ask for his fishing pole back and us have to punch him Monsieur le Capitaine, and say no. What can I do for you? When are you leaving for Portsmouth? In two hours. Are you coming? How about yes, right come now? Aboard. Oh, wow. We're actually... The interior, we have a little cabin. That's fun. Look at that. That's fun. Get a complimentary towel after everything. I think I need through. to change my clothes just yet. Like those trainers. It's too early to pack. We won't be arriving yet. I don't think I need to change my clothes just yet. Clothes and stuff. Clothes and stuff. Did you like pack a whole? I thought it was just a short little ferry trip. I mean, we are going to France every time. It's not a short little ferry trip, but that's fine. Hmm, it's empty. Hmm. Don't want to go to bed just yet. else going on? I feel like there's something I need in this room. Hold on. I think I'd better leave the amulet in the cabin. I might lose it otherwise, or it might be stolen. But where can I put it? Is that open? That looks interactable. Is our arm goes through the... Uh... We're gonna blue streak it, put this up in the vent. Yep, blue streak. Underrated movie, actually. Pretty decent comedy <laughs> from back in the day. Believe that. A perfect hiding place for the amulet. No one will find it there. Why don't you just keep it on you and wait until the trip is over? Like you've done... Like every other trip we've taken, it's been like... Like that. I think I'll go and get some fresh air. I'm feeling a bit... God, what's been going on here? Someone's broken into my cabin and searched through all my things. What? Definitely Pierre. Revenge for taking his fishing pole. And they got the amulet. So we we couldn't advance the plot without losing the amulet? That's pretty rich. The amulet? Where's the amulet? It's been stolen. I don't believe it. Yeah, turns out a lot of people saw a blue streak in the late 90s, Brent. Come on, your super secret hiding spot that no one would ever find. The amulet? Where's the amulet? Where's it's the amulet? Stolen. I don't believe it. That's definitely a plot device. Did the uh, thief leave their calling card? Why didn't you just leave it on your, in your pocket, in your jacket somewhere? I, I don't understand. Whoever did this made a thorough job of it. Can't leave my cabin without leaving this super important item behind. Makes no sense. Whoever did this made a thorough job of it. Oh, my suit jacket's on the floor. Whoever did this made a thorough job of it. A thorough job. Whoever did this made a thorough job of it. I don't see any. Cat burglar calling cards. Honestly, you could probably scour this place in three minutes or less. It's not that difficult. Blast it. The thief must still be on board. But we're pulling into the harbor. I'll never catch him now. It's pretty embarrassing, Halligan. Pretty embarrassing. Tell Arthur that we found the uh, annual, but we lost it. Like an idiot. Just tell him that whole part in France was stupid. 
and blame him for sending us there in the first place. Maybe punch him too. He's in a wheelchair. Maybe don't Hello, punch Mr. him. Hello, Mr. Blake. I'm back. And? Did you find the amulet? Well, That's a long story. You're an idiot. Why didn't you just keep it in your pants, Alligan? Well, go on then. I can't wait to hear what happened. Oh, I forget I his found the amulet. game show host It was boys. walled up in the Lord's mausoleum. Really? It really does exist then. And you've got it. Show me. Uh. Well, I did have it, but it was stolen from me. Stolen? How did that happen? No idea. I hid it in my cabin during the crossing. Someone broke in and rummaged through all my luggage. Was anything else missing? No, not a thing. Someone must have been following. My jacket was I didn't on the floor. Anyone. Who could have known I'd been looking for an amulet in that godforsaken dump? Certain people may be taking a great interest in your investigations, Mr. Halligan. Do not underestimate the power of the druids. Just don't buy that. It's his voice. <laughs> Almost as much as I don't buy the Capitan's voice, but. I haven't met anyone who looked like a druid so far. Don't profile Hal again. That's the first mistake a detective can make. Mr. Blake, are you saying the druid stole the amulet? That's absurd. The amulet is vital to the perfection of their ritual. Believe me, we're not the only ones with a particular interest in the amulet. The druids are after it just as much. I thought the druids ceased to exist 1,000 years ago. It seems there are still some left, after all. Just as I suspected, they are among just us now. I suspected, they live 1,000 years. Place. I haven't met anyone who looked like a druid so far. No, no, Mr. Halligan. You won't recognize the inheritors by their cloaks and sickles. They're people, just like you and me. Hmm. They could be powerful industrialists, high-ranking politicians, or influential military men. People in key positions of society. What can I do then? I can't possibly check up on the entire upper class of British society looking for a couple of druids. No, but it may be worth your while to keep an eye on groups of neo-druids. Neo if anyone tries to justify their claims to the druids' inheritance, they will. Neo-druids? Neo-druids? What are they? There are a number of groups around claiming to be the Druids' rightful successors. They're organized in orders, like Templars or Freemasons. There it is! Broken sword. Man. Tell me more about these Neo-Druids. Like I said, the Neo-Druids... Another Game Boy buddy gifted me, actually. According to ancient and we Druid played here ideals. on Let's Play with Some Brigands. of them do a lot of charitable work as well. But there are some really dubious associations going around combining the druids' customs with occult rites. Rumors say that there is such a sect at large somewhere in London. In London, you said? Do you know where I might find these people? I've no idea. All I know is that the only people who know anything about the order refer to it as the Circle. Wait, there was another... All right. Thank you, Mr. Blake. I'll see what I can make of it. Good. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to call on me anytime you like. One more thing, Mr. Blake. Ooh, yeah. Yes. Columbo is ass. This business could get pretty dangerous from now on. Yes. Very likely, Mr. Halligan. It may be safer for both of us if we let someone else in on the matter. Please call Melanie Turner in Oxford and tell her the whole story. Make sure she learns everything you've told me. She works at the Anthropological Museum. Her number's in the phone book. And tell her I'll get in touch with her myself as soon as possible. Would you do that for me? Of course, Mr. Halligan. Good luck. I thought he was going to say, It's like, Mr. Blake, we need to hide you somewhere safe. I'm going to hide you in this vent. I just, I, it's for your own good, trust me. It's not a safe place, Halligan. Come on now. You learned that firsthand. All right, back to HQ. Halligan, into my office at once. Oh, oh, oh. That no. That doesn't sound good. That's where the brass chews us out. You're not Halligan. getting results. Come on in. I suppose we should be glad that you drop in now and then. What's the matter, Chief? You know, Halligan, you spent ten thousand pounds on fairy what trips. Been doing. 
I've been investigating, Chief. Well, have you? And do you know what I've been doing? I've been dismissing loads of press people, worried citizens, and politicians from my office. The phone hasn't stopped ringing since this morning. The mayor's been to my office, and I haven't seen much of you. When do you expect to come up with results? Then know you care, Chief. I'm getting there, Chief. But it takes time. Takes time? Takes time? Will I ever get to hear anything else from a detective? Where the heck have you been, Halligan? You'll get a report at the end of the week. The end of the week? Why not at the end of the month or at the end of the year? I want the results on my desk tomorrow morning, Halligan. And now, I want to know where you've been all this time. France. You'll find out when you read the report I'm going to write. Don't be impertinent, detective. As your chief, I'm entitled to ask you about the results of investigations and your proceedings whenever I like. Yes, chief. Of course. That sounds better. Otherwise, I could have you write a report about every single step of your proceedings, and I think you know that. Very well, then. I was visiting an expert on druids. You were what? <laughs> Halligan, have you lost your marbles? You're not supposed to be indulging in your hobbies. You're supposed to be solving the skeleton murders. Oh, right. Forget about that. You know what, Chief? You don't rattle me. I know for a fact that you don't have anyone else you can put on this case. You already fired Lowry. I'm the only other person in this department, apparently, in all of Homicide, so... Is that all, Chief? No, that is not all. One of the phone calls this morning was from the 4th District, in Oxford. Uh-huh. And? A beggar has been to see them. He claimed that somebody had first put him <laughs> to sleep, and then robbed him. Yeah. And do you know who that person was? Yeah. No? A man who calls himself Detective Halligan! Our colleagues looked into the central personal database, and guess what? They found a man by the name of Detective Halligan, and he works for my department. What do you say to that? What a coincidence, Chief. The beggar must be mistaken. When did you receive the phone call? Chief, the beggar must be mistaken. Yeah. It's a mix-up. He's a drunk. A mix-up? I hope so. If these accusations turn out to be true, you can spend the rest of your Was I not supposed to drug a homeless man? Cars. Was that a... Was that wrong? Should I... No one told me. At my last job... Encouraged. When did you receive the phone call from our colleagues? Oh, less than half an hour ago. Have you any idea how embarrassed I was about the affair? The colleague I talked to said that the beggar still had some of the substance he'd been knocked out with. Medical alcohol... That has you written juice. all over it, Halligan. Please tell me you didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it, Chief. Honestly. Well, I hope so. For your benefit. From now on, I expect you to start looking into the case at hand. All oh, right, the murder. Okay, Chief. I read you. Indeed? Excellent, Detective. Then get out and do your job. And, Halligan, if I should hear that you are conducting your investigations in any dubious or illegal way, I'll take you off the case immediately. Understood, Chief. It's not my fault, Chief. There's just mounds of moon logic and soft locks I have to deal with. Trying my best. All right. Well, let's say we uh, we should check in with Janet in the next episode, and Chris maybe as well. Pick up in the next episode and make some progress here in Mystery of the Druids right here on Let's Play with Brigands. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you.